Now playing with the left hand thumb is one of these things that I discovered over the last 16 years of teaching guitar. It doesn't come equally naturally to all guitarists. So to some it's a bit easier, to some it's a bit harder. Some need to put in less work and some a bit more, which is totally fine. And for these people, I wrote this playful workout here, which I call the outsider, because it perfectly reflects for me what the thumb actually is. Have a look, you have four fingers on the fretboard but there's only one at the back of the neck. There's only one opponent, which is really important because it keeps the guitar neck in balance. So imagine it wouldn't be there. You would constantly push the neck of the guitar back. You would constantly struggle finding good balance of the guitar neck. So this is the importance of the thumb, but even for other pieces of music, you want to bring the thumb on top of the neck to make it part of your guitar playing. Um, you've probably done that before when you strum a D major chord, you don't want to hear the low E string, it's not part of the chord. So usually we avoid that by blocking the low E string from ringing. And for other pieces, you want to have your thumb fretting the low E string. This is what I want to do here in this um, piece of music with you. Um, you want to fret the low E string, which is really cool because it adds another fretting finger to your hand. Have a look down below there, the tabs, download them, print them, make notes, make them yours. They're the action steps in order to play this piece of music. There's a difficulty level, time estimation, extra tips, encouragement. The first step that I want you to take is playing a single note on the low E string using your thumb as your fretting finger. And therefore get your thumb in position, which you do by having this groove here right after the top section of your thumb, kind of like locked in at the, at the top edge of the neck here. And also, let your wrist and hand hang down from there and let your shoulder in its natural position. So don't push your wrist and shoulder up like that. We don't want that. Just let it hang down from there and keep it relaxed. This is your initial position. And then from there, you reach around a bit more to actually fret that string. And I'm on fret eight here, which is the note C, by the way. And make it sound, get very close to the fret wire here. And there's an important detail. Do you see this? It's kind of like tilted so that it roughly points to my right leg here, which is really important because it allows me to fret the other strings um, with my other fingers as well, which is not possible if you have your thumb pointing straight down. Do you see this? It's impossible to fret these strings here with my other fingers, but by tilting it slightly so that it roughly points to my right leg, it's kind of like a 45 degree angle here. It allows me to have my kind of like almost usual um, playing position. Now this is the position and then I want you to play this single note here in four different ways. The first one being legato, meaning rather long and connected notes, sounding like this. And also have a look how I do it here on the right hand. I play them with my thumb as well and I go away from the strings and then I come back in a circular motion. This is legato. Then the second way being the opposite, which is staccato, you want to have them rather short and separated. Which you do with your left hand only, which is you apply pressure, you get the string down, you play the string, you play that one note, and then instantly after you take off the pressure, but you keep touching the strings because if you lift all fingers, you would hear the open strings. We don't want that, we want silence, that's it. This is staccato. Then the third way being dead notes. So you back off with your thumb just a bit to just block the low E string and then you play it. You don't fret it anymore, which results in a rather percussive than a pitched sound. This is dead notes. And then the fourth way being a hammer on. You back off a bit more. You lift the top section here to free the open string play it and then you do your hammer on. A 
it doesn't need to be very loud, just make it audible, make it sound clean. The initial bass line leading up to the first chord is really cool because it combines these ways except that that notes aren't in there. So you play the open string, you do your hammer on on fret one, and you instantly take off the pressure but keep touching the string to make it sound short, to make it staccato. Followed by a long note, and then the same on fret three, short and long, short and long on six, and this is where you want to be, where you want to fret your first chord here. Let's do it again. Now before I show you the chord part, there's an important element that you need, a percussion um, element, which is that click sound, which I play on beats two and four here and there, which you achieve by hitting the strings like that, very loosely, very relaxed. Maybe hitting is too strong of a word because it's nothing more than this really loose so don't hit it hard don't press further because this will result in having that nasty sound this is not what we want we want that click sound nothing more than this what you get mainly from the top string here which I hit with the extended thumb and palm but there's another important detail here I have my fingers already in position to play again which is really important because Otherwise, it'll take too much time to be able to play again. And I've seen that a couple of times. People do that click sound and it sounds cool, but they're in a terrible position and they can't play again. Which is, for example, if you do it with the open hand, yes, it can sound cool. But the thing is, you have an issue now because you have to get away from the strings in order to curve the fingers again. Then get them in position before you can play again. So it just takes too much time. Get them in position right away when you do the click which is having the thumb on the top string, then index on the D string, middle finger um, G string, and then ring finger B string. That's really all in here in bars two to four, so really mind the details here. There's a long bass note followed by a short chord, so you take off the pressure of all these notes, but you keep touching strings, and then the dead note, a long bass note, long chord, then it's the first click sound, followed by the next chord, you just add the little finger here, This is dead notes on these three strings while I move over to the next chord. And then I repeat that part to strengthen the idea. So I start with the initial bass line again leading up to these chords and I play them again. Now the second section brings something fresh. The first section was playing around that sus sound, that open sound, but now the second section brings in the blues because we introduced two dominant seventh chords we haven't played before and they're in a specific relationship to each other. Also, you'll benefit from these uh, learning these chord voices as they're very common. You hear them in jazz music, jazz, blues, big band playing, but you know, sometimes you hear them in pop music as well, but with us tunes, use them as well. Um, and it all starts with an initial bass line leading up to the next chord. It's all the same, same hammer-ons, same legato, staccato playing, but it's on different notes. So fret five, six, and then eighth. And then this is the first chord here, it's an F7. With the click sound again. And then I play the same bass line again as if I wanted to go through that chord again, but I have to disappoint. I go to this one here which is a B flat seven. And then I repeat this idea, I repeat this section to strengthen the idea, I have two strong parts. And then at the end, I bring back that initial bass line, the first bass line, as if I wanted to go back to the first section, but I don't. I slow it down, and then a bit delayed, I play that last chord. Which I find really beautiful, it's a really nice chord. You could also play it here over the fretboard makes it sound a bit like a harp. Download the tabs, print them, make them yours, make notes. Have a look at the action steps. Enjoy and I'll see you in the next lesson.